Hello. Hello, John. This is Alex Callan calling for the Faction Radio. How's it going? Hey, what's going on? It's Feldy. Yeah, not, not too much, not too much. Uh, how about yourself? I'm just chilling at home like everybody else in Southern California. Yeah, you guys are pretty severely locked down at the moment. It, it, things have kind of got worse over the last couple of months, haven't they? Yeah, apparently there's a, a shitload of cases happening, so they've locked us all down again, yes. Damn, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough. We're kind of just coming out of that, so I know kind of how hard it is to be locked at home. All right, I'm jumping in a helicopter right now. Do you think a helicopter will get me over? Are you in Sydney? I, I, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Is that, like, like for real, are you actually about to jump in a helicopter, or just if you could? No, I'm not, I'm not allowed to go. I don't think a helicopter would get me much further than the Catalina Islands. I think, I think, I'd, be, I, I think I'd be stuck at sea somewhere. I kind of got scared for a second there, John, because I knew that if you're in a helicopter, this phone connection would not last. And I was like, oh, my God, this interview is about to go so horribly bad right now. <laughs> No, man, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm stuck. I'm not going anywhere. So if anyone has just tuned in, because we did just go straight into conversation, we are lucky enough to have the lead singer John Feldman of punk rock icon Goldfinger on the line. Uh, Goldfinger's recently released their newest album, Never Look Back. How have you felt since releasing that, John? You know, it feels like it's been out for two days, so I'm... I feel like people are really stoked on the record. Uh, I haven't really heard any, you know, that much negative. Uh, none. I, uh, someone told me I look like a gopher in the in the music video, but other than that, everything's been really, really positive. And plus, gophers are really cute, so it's, maybe that's not even negative. I, I just think the whole thing's positive. I would definitely take the gopher comment as a positive. I mean, gophers are incredibly cute. Yeah, so I'm I'm the gopher of Goldfinger now, not the goat. I'm the gopher. And it's actually your first release under Big Noise as well, which is your own record label. That's right. I started a record label about about a year and a half ago, and I, this was my dream to release my own music, my own content under my own label. So I have complete control. You know, I produce so many other bands, and I work with so many other artists that I have no control when the record comes out or what songs are going to make the album or any of that shit. So... Uh, I'm stoked. I can, just put, I can put out music when I want to. I can choose what's on the record. I produced it myself, so I can tell the singer to go fuck off if I want to because I'm the singer, <laughs> so whatever. And, you know, I did notice as well, for a record label, you've already gone for such an incredibly eclectic mix in the last year. I mean, to release albums from people like Little Dicky to the youth to Casey Veggies, there's obviously quite, you know, you're going for quite a diverse approach. What was the initial kind of thought behind that? I mean, look, I like all kinds of music. I'm not like a, a pure, a, a punk rock purist. I've always liked all kinds of music. I mean, when I was growing up, I mean, I loved Black Flag and Social Distortion, but I also liked, you know, Queen and the Police. So it's like, because I've had so many different um, influences, I wanted I just wanted a record label that wasn't like um, just elitist, you know. And I mean, Little Dicky's amazing, and I'm so grateful that we get to put out his music. But I, you know, I mean, the used are part of my family. You know, I, I discovered them, I signed them initially, and now to have them on my own label is like a dream come true. That's absolutely incredible to hear how it's all kind of come together, and it's. You know, it sounds like it has such a family dynamic within the label. Yeah, John Cohen and I, who's one of the, I mean, it's Nick Gross, John Cohen, and me that that are the three founders of the label. And, and you know, Nick Gross plays drums in Goldfinger, and he's an old friend of mine, and he's just a legend. And then John Cohen, who signed Blink-182, we did the, we did the, 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 the California Blink record together. And we just became really best friends, ultimately. And so, you know, he signed Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zero. He signed the 1975. The guy's a legend in this business. So I just knew I wanted to be partners with him. And it just kind of came together. And I'm just, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky to have partners I actually like. 
Yeah, that that is an absolutely incredible team. And, yeah, I, I suppose as well that kind of, you know, does make a lot of sense to the eclectic mix of artists. You know, there's so many different people involved coming from, you know, such a variety of different backgrounds. It's, it's pretty awesome how everyone's kind of contributing something different. I know. I'm so lucky. I mean, really, I just feel so, so lucky every day. And I'm just grateful that I, you know, put out this record that, um, I don't know. I just this this time when everyone's stuck at home and kind of suffering from low grade depression everywhere you look, and people are, you know, really struggling. I wanted to make a positive album that just had a message of hope and a message of positivity that people can listen to and go work out to, or just you know, kind of get out of their own heads and just um, you know, I, I mean, ska music is dance music, so I wanted to make a record you could dance to. And. Because, you know, with what you said about how you wanted to, you know, bring a bit of fun to the people on quarantine, there were so many videos. Yeah, I mean, look, we, you, you guys kept so many yeah, we made all the quarantine. Yeah, yeah, those videos we made were like, I mean, they were basically like bred out of complete boredom. Because I was so, I was like, what am I going to do? I didn't know what COVID was in the beginning. No one did. I didn't know if you were going to catch it and die. So no one was coming over. We were locked down all the way. You know, we didn't go, we just, you know, obviously like everybody, we stayed indoors. And I knew I had to do something to stay busy. So I made those quarantine videos. And I had so many people hitting me up and being like, thank you. Thank you for making those videos. So I wanted to make a, an album that encapsulated the energy of those quarantine videos. So was the the writing and recording of the album, did that come post those videos? Um, yes. I mean, 90, 95% of it was written after the videos. I just, you know, no one wanted to come in the studio. No one wanted to, um, obviously, you know, no one wanted to, to work because everyone was scared of dying. And so I just started writing music. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and focus on things I can't control. I can't control who's president. I can't control. I can vote, but I've got to let it go. After I vote, I've got to let go of the results. The results aren't up to me. You know, they're up to uh, you know, power much bigger than me. And so I wanted to do the same thing with my music and just write music about focusing on what's important in my life, which is my family, my kids, my wife, and uh, my dogs, you know, and the life that I have. And I wanted to just make an album that was just – you know, filled with hopeful, joyous energy because I'd rather focus on that than on negative bullshit that I can't control. Without a doubt. And, you know, that's such a that's such a big and, and powerful move, I feel, John, because in, in the past I feel as if, you know, quite a lot of Goldfinger's, uh, I suppose, credo and, you know, lyrical content has been a bit more confronting in terms of, you know, activism and things like that. So it's pretty incredible to take somewhat of an opposite approach this time around. Yeah, you know, we made, um, I mean, Open Your Eyes, which was our one, two, three, four, fifth album. I mean, I was very in the middle of my animal rights activism. And, and, and that whole album is really about, you know, being, you know, kind of proactive and trying to change the world. And now it's like I don't. It's not that I, I I don't believe that. Of course, I still believe it. But I mean, there's only so much you can do when you're when you're stuck at home. There's only so much that we can really change. And so I can change my own attitude because that's what I can control. Is uh, you know I can either be stuck in quarantine with a good attitude or with a bad attitude. And I'd much rather I'm, I'm stuck either way. So I'd much rather have a good attitude. And it sounds like it's paid off incredibly. I mean, you've got so much done this year in a year where most people have kind of managed to finally catch up on all the seasons of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Dude, how good is Game of Thrones, though? I mean, come on. Yeah, oh, it's, it's worth watching, especially if you haven't got around to it yet. But, yeah, that's definitely been my year, just kind of watching a lot of TV and you know, you've managed to not only entertain fans with incredible videos and go out and make an album. So, yeah, it's an incredible turnaround. I'm, uh, I'm miserable if I'm not busy. So I had to, st I had to stay busy. And, uh, and this album was just a joy for me to make. And I, just, I hope it comes through on the other end that people enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it.
I, I feel that definitely shines through. You know, there's so many punk rock moments, but it does still have that old school kind of 90s ska feel to it, which it's, it's kind of hard to get in a bad mood when you're listening to ska music, I feel. Yeah, ska music is not meant for depression. <laughs> it's meant for the opposite of depression. I um, did want to ask something in regard to that, uh, I suppose, quickly, John. And, you know, yep. it's, I, I suppose it'll probably, because I'm running out of time, it'll have to be my last question, but I, I find the history of punk music incredibly interesting. And a lot of Australian punk bands in the 70s and 80s used a lot of horns but never necessarily went the ska route instead used it to create heaviness. And I was wondering if, if you feel there was a reason why the American scene was so ska-orientated. Um, I mean, I think most of the bands that I came up with, like No Doubt and Real Big Fish, uh, the Aquabats, I mean, most of those bands listened to Fishbone and the Specials and the Untouchables and just a lot of kind of Southern California or, or British ska bands. And I think most of those bands used horns to be, um, uh, to be upbeat and up-tempo. And I think that our influences came either, you know, it, it came from Britain to uh, Southern California and then obviously made it, made it to me in, in the early, in the mid-90s. And so I don't know why Australia took it as a, as a heavy thing. That's that's an interesting. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah, there's um, there's definitely a couple of bands from the early '70s, like Radio Birdman and the Saints, and yeah, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on um, kind of how they use horns because I've always found it such a interesting contrast. But um, I'll check it out for sure. Anyway, thank you so much for having a chat today, John. Um, unfortunately, I've run out of time, but it's been unreal having you on the faction. Thank you, brother.